Welcome to this tutorial on our package meta. I'm Guido Schwarzer. I'm the um, author of the package. Um, the R script and the data set used can be found on Xenodo. Um, there are two versions of um, the package, the official crown version and a development version on uh, GitHub where you can find bug, bug fixes and so on. Let's start by looking at the help page of the package. Um, so this provides a, yeah, a brief overview of the methods and some uh, general hints on the package. Um, so Meta is a general package for um, meta-analysis, and it also supports our book, Meta-Analysis with R. Um, for each um, outcome, there is a dedicated R function. For example, for binary outcomes, there's the Meta-Bim function, or if you would like to do a meta-analysis of correlations, then there is the meta core function. Um, the standard plots are implemented for this plot, funnel plot, and some others as well. Some more advanced methods like uh, three level models or generalized linear mixed models are also available. And these um, methods actually uh, come from our package metaphor, which is used internally not only to, yeah, to estimate these uh, methods, but also to conduct meta regression um, and also to estimate the between study variance. So let's have a closer look at um, the meta bin function. Um, here you can see there is a very long list of arguments um, for this function, but uh, yeah, the really essential are only the first four. Um, so what we have to provide is the number of events in the experimental group, as well as the sample size in this group, and the same for the control group. Um, all other arguments are optional. However, typically you would also use a data argument because um, then you can yeah, directly uh, use here the names of the variables from the data set. Um, okay, so let's have a look at an example. Um, this is a meta-analysis um, comparing haloperidol and placebo uh, in schizophrenia. Um, and here the, the outcome of interest is clinical improvement, which is a binary outcome. Let's have a look, load the data and have a look at um, some studies. So uh, as you can see here, we have uh, for each group three variables. So we have the, the number of responders. So patients with a clinical improvement. We have the number of failures in the group, H for haloperidol, P for placebo, and we also have information on dropouts. So, and what we see here is that uh, the number of dropouts is quite different in these studies. So the last three studies do not have dropouts at all. And especially this b study has a large number of dropouts in the two groups. Um, we only use this information here to um, yeah, to do a subgroup analysis, um, but there are also other methods uh, I will talk about later, just very briefly, uh, that could be used in such a setting here in order to impute um, the missing information. So what we do here is we just add um, a new variable miss, which has information on whether there are dropouts or not, and uh, as I said, this will be used in a subgroup analysis. Here is then now the, the meta bin command for the meta analysis with the, the binary outcome. Um, the first two arguments are for the haloperidol group. So number of um, clinical improvements and total sample size. Dropouts are ignored here in this, uh, this analysis. And the same here for the placebo group. Um, the study labels here are just, yeah, combination of the, the first uh, author name and the year of publication. Um, if we run this analysis and print it out, we get the standard um, layout for the meta package, which is basically the same for any outcome type. First, we have information here on the number of studies that are combined here, 17. Um, and then uh, if this information is available on the number of observations and the number of events in total in these um, 17 studies. By default, we get results for the common effect and the random effects model. 
as well as information on yeah um, tau squared, i squared, and so on. And here at the bottom, we see that by default, the mantle hensel method is used under the common effect model, and the restricted maximum likelihood estimator is used to estimate tau squared in the random effects model. Uh, these are the default settings, but as I will show you later on, uh, this can be changed uh, quite easily by the user. Um, then we have here the summary command. The summary command is a yeah more detailed um, printout. So here we see at the bottom uh, the same printout as for the uh, the print function, but here for the summary um, function we also get uh, results for the individual studies. So we see here the estimated risk ratios, um, the weights under the common and the random effects model. Um, typically, we would like to produce a forest plot for our data, and this can be done with the forest function. The first argument is the meta-analysis object, and here we use three more arguments. With sort while we say we would like to sort the studies by the year of publication, and with label left and label right, we give some uh, yeah, informative uh, uh, information here at the bottom of the forest plot, as you will see when we produce the plot. So this is here the, the standard um, layout of this plot, which could be uh, yeah, changed uh, in quite many ways um, with the, within the, within the forest function. Again, we see here the studies here sorted by the year publication and the, the basic information that we uh, yeah, have already seen in the data set um, and so on. And at, at the bottom here results for the common and the random effects model. Um, typically what I do then next is, or what I do is to, to uh, save uh, forest plots that, that I would like to use in publication or to, to discuss with uh, clinicians about. I save them as a, a PDF file. And um, here you have to, uh, yeah, tweak this or use a slightly different command than just the PDF command, because if we use the default settings, we get a, a PDF file with dimensions seven uh, by seven inch. And this would then look like this. So here we, we see that on the, the right and left side information is missing. So uh, what one has to do is one has to provide the, the width and the height of the PDF file. And if we do that here, then we see that this uh, yeah, is then an, a nicely uh, formatted uh, PDF file that, that we could use either in a publication or to discuss. So, and what I do here is the only change is that I use here a different layout. So here I use the, the layout of RevMan5 for the forest plot. Um, and slightly wider um, PDF file. And this would then look like this here. Um, and the same could be done also with uh, SVG, for example, uh, or PostScript or JPEG uh, or PNG files. So th there are, um, th that all you would do here in a similar way. Uh, to conduct subgroup analysis, this is quite um, easy to do with um, with um, the meta package. The only thing you have to do is you have to provide here the argument uh, subgroup with the information on which variable uh, you would like to use for the, the subgroup analysis. Um, and what I also do here is I, I say I'm not interested in the common effect model. I just would like to see the results for the random effects model. And I use here the update command. So I update my meta-analysis object. Uh, I do not show the um, common effect uh, results and I conduct a subgroup analysis. And then the printout here for this subgroup analysis would like, look like this. Um, again, here at top, we get the same uh, results as before. And here are the results for, for our subgroups, let me rerun this command, oh, the print, print out here. Okay, so that we get all results here in one line. 
what we can see is here we have uh, 10 studies uh, with missing um, data and uh, seven studies of the 17 without missing data. They, they have quite different values here. So we have here a significant difference between the two, two groups of studies, um, which uh, one then would in an additional step uh, would like to, to further evaluate, um, especially as we have here the information on how many uh, missing observations there are. And one possibility to do that would be to use the meta miss function from the R package MetaSense. But we here we do not uh, talk about this in more detail. And as you can also see here, by default, um, we allow for a different tau squared um, estimate in the two subgroups. There is an argument tau common we could use. And then we uh, would get a result where we assume a common tau squared value in the two groups. Um, some more information, for example, on the summary measures are um, available on one help site. So here, for example, for the MetaBin function, we see that the available summary measures are odds ratio, risk ratio, risk difference, arc sign difference, uh, and also here with we either vaccine efficacy or effectiveness. For continuous outcomes, um, the available summary measures are the mean difference, standardized mean difference, and um, the ratio of means, um, and and so on here for the other other methods. Um, and also, let's now look here at at the uh, uh, the list elements of a, a meta analysis object, because sometimes uh, you you are interested to extract some information from from a meta object and then it's uh, yeah important to know which information is available where and this here is a rather long listing of all the um, information that is available in in uh, any meta analysis object created with meta starting with the study labels uh, um, and so on and then for example the the level of confidence intervals for individual studies, uh, lower upper confidence limits, and so on. So um, you could um, extract any of this information um, if, if you are interested in it. And for level, for example, if we go here back to the meta bin function, we see here that by default, um, the, the value of uh, GS level is used here. Um, as default, and this actually is here the 95% confidence level. And the confidence level for a meta-analysis estimate is uh, saved here in um, level um, MA, which is also um, 95%. And um, all on all these two settings, as with as well as several other settings um, that are available in the meta package, can be printed with this command here. And this is really a very long list. I will not talk in detail about this, but just uh, briefly show you here some of the 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 more general arguments. I already talked about the the first two here. Here is an argument for the common and the random effects model. So you could define whether you would like to use uh, only the random effects, only the common effects, or both. Default is both. Um, some information here on uh, confidence intervals under the random effects model. Um, the, the default estimate of what all squared is REML. This could also be, be changed. The question whether prediction intervals should be calculated and shown, and so on. Um, yeah, and one thing you may have noticed or not in the printout is that uh, I printed the, the risk ratios with um, uh, four digits, which is uh, quite a lot for, for risk ratio. So with this command here, we can define that estimates and confidence limits should be shown only with two digits. And if I now print again my meta-analysis object, I will see that in the printout, we only have here these two 
digits instead of four. What I could also do is I can change the layout of confidence intervals with this command here. And then, for example, it would look like this. Um, and there are several other possibilities with the, the settings meta function. And uh, if you look here at um, this uh, long printout and then uh, go to the corresponding function, for example, for the forest meta function, then you can see what, what is the actual meaning of, of the uh, argument here. So th that's it from me with a brief introduction to the meta package. Um, thank you for your attention.